In today's video, I am going to be breaking down my top five ETFs for the year 2022. I hope that these work out for myself as well as for you as well, but this first one is actually just kind of a bonus because I just found out about it two seconds ago. I bought a whole bunch of shares and I thought this would be a fantastic addition as well. So really, this is a top six video. Let's get down, let's check these out. Okay, so this first one is a purpose investment ETF. It's literally only been around for less than one month. And basically what it does is it pays a 14.5% dividend. There's other options that pay 14.4 and 14.58. However, the one I personally purchased 240 shares of is this one. It's currently, I bought it at $8.25 a share, technically speaking, when you're talking roughly around the commission, but I bought it at 8.23 and then there's commission on top. Its ticker symbol is BTCY, there's also BTCYB and BTCYU. The difference is this one is not hedged and this one is in American dollars while this one is hedged in Canadian dollars. You're probably trying to figure out how is a Bitcoin ETF able to pay such a high dividend? It's because they're running a covered call strategy where essentially they will sell call options against the Bitcoins that they have and essentially they can get a massive, massive income and yield from those uh, those covered calls and then they basically distribute it as essentially a dividend but it, there is it's technically yield because it's not a dividend dividends have their own tax bracket while yield in this case it would be capital gains however at 14 and a half percent with the potential upside of Bitcoin makes it quite interesting especially for this year the reason being is there's all of these analysts, some big, some small, who are saying, oh, there's going to be a terrible market year in 2022. Well, if that's the case, generally speaking, commodities go up in price if it's a bad year. Things like gold. If the stock market goes down, gold generally goes up. And Bitcoin is no different. Bitcoin is essentially computerized digital gold, according to many people who actually know stuff about it. And in my opinion that seems to be kind of working out that way, that way. So if the market really does truly go down, you can get a massive yield and still play the Bitcoin game. Now, my technically my first choice, other than that bonus I just gave you, was ZWA, and this is the BMO cover called Dow Jones Industrial Average Hedged T yeah, ETF. It's hedged to the Canadian dollar, and its ticker symbol is ZWA. This one has not a 14% dividend. This one only has a 4.5% dividend, 4.58 at the time of making this video. However, it's quite interesting. So that last Bitcoin ETF I just showed you had a 1.1% MER. Generally speaking, most covered call strategies are around 0.7. And basically what an MER is, is the amount of money that, or percentage of money that, in this case, BMO would take from what you have invested so that they can pay themselves because they're actively managing the investments. Now this one has a lower average volume. The Bitcoin ETF had around 14 to 15,000 shares per day. This one has 5,000 shares traded on average every single day. So these are not heavily traded ETFs. However, one thing I do really like about ZWA versus other covered call strategies is a lot of covered calls will slowly dwindle down to nothingness while this one actually goes up in value from $20 all the way up to 27 over the past five years. It's kind of traded sideways for most of that time. And of course, there was the virus and the recovery. And since then, it's been kind of trading sideways in a way. So it does kind of seem like it's trading kind of in a range right now. So it may be a good time to buy before either the next dip, which would suck, or uh, before the next rise. This one does pay 10 cents per share. There's been times where it does go up, as we see here. However, with covered call strategies, it generally is usually different every single month. But with BMO, they tend to keep it pretty well close. They did raise it back in 2020, so keep that in mind too. So these are the top 10 stocks that it holds, and they do 
sell covered call strategies or covered call options against these as well. Some of the bigger names that I really like in this group is Home Depot. There's going to be a big explosion of houses that need to be built. House prices across North America are going up huge and nobody has been building or at least there's been a lack of building in my opinion versus what is needed. So that is going to be a massive gainer I think over the next few years. There's going to be vacationing coming back with Boeing. I don't care what people are saying about this virus. And Visa, because more and more people are buying online. These are just all great options anyways. Microsoft, even though I hate the company, is a great option too. I've talked about this one quite a few times. This is another one of my favorites. And this one is another covered call strategy. It's TXF. This one holds a lot of the tech stocks. And it does pay a big dividend as well. I really like these covered calls, at least the ones that actually grow in value. Because generally speaking, a lot of covered call strategies have kind of gotten a bad name because a lot of them go down in value or just don't go anywhere at all. However, the ones that I have picked out and I've found pay a high dividend and still have growth. They may not have 8%, 10% growth, but if you're getting a 5 to 14% dividend and when you're looking at the growth being maybe 3 or 4% a year after the after the MER is taken off, that's still in my opinion really good. You're doing better than interest, you're doing better than inflation generally speaking other than the past couple of months and you're getting paid a very good amount of money. It's not that bad of an option. And this one pays 10.7% with a 0.71 MER and the volume is into the tens of thousands at 36,000 shares traded every single day. This one's also been around for a very long time as well. It's been around since 2011. And then when we look at the chart, the five year chart is absolutely amazing. Obviously just everything skyrocketed recently, but even if you, I forgot to click max on this video, but when we're looking back even farther, the, the growth on this ETF is just absolutely fantastic. And if you could grab it on those, those downtrends, anytime that happens, it's just absolutely fantastic. This is what you're usually used to when it comes to the covered call strategies, the e the dividend changing all the time. Now this one pays a quarterly dividend, not a monthly one like the last two. However, if we're looking year over year, let's say June to June, we're looking at pretty much sideways, uh, there's no real growth at that point of the dividend. But if we're looking over a, like a four year period, let's say September 2017, to December of this past year, that's when you start seeing the growth in the dividend. And as long as the dividend's growing, in my opinion, you're pretty well set pretty good for the future. These are the top stocks that this one holds. Personally, AMD is just an absolutely amazing company. This These top 10 tend to change quite often as well, by the way. But Nvidia, any of the chip stocks are going to be just absolutely fantastic. And then of course there's Apple, which has uh, finally made this list. It wasn't in it for a little while anyways. And Texas Instruments. These are fantastic, fantastic options for the future because there's a massive shortage worldwide on chips and it's not gonna stop anytime soon. This next one doesn't have a massive dividend, but it's got a pretty good dividend. This is a REIT ETF, it's ZRE, it's the BMO Equal Weight REITs, and this one does pay a 4.2% dividend. Now, the reason why I'm kind of leaning towards the REITs is because we're all recovering right now. There's a lot of companies that are still looking to hire and things like that, and because of that, that tells me that there is stability at least going to be in the rental market when it comes to uh, homes, but also uh, a lot of REITs, for example, this one holds a lot of industrial REITs, or uh, sorry, industrial buildings, which in my opinion, if there's companies still looking to hire, that means that there's more people probably running their own business as well, potentially buying or renting or leasing or whatever you want to call it, um, or whatever their situation is, but generally the renting these big industrial buildings, they're going to be obviously making more money. And if there's less big companies needing them and more small companies needing them, then they could actually split them up and get even more rent for those buildings. So uh, in my opinion, it's a fantastic option. Low average volume, however, so keep that in mind. It's only 27,000 shares traded every single day, but the MER is a bit lower than the covered calls at 0.6 instead of 0.7.
See, what's given REITs a bad name, in my opinion, because it's the reason why I never invested in them in the past, is because usually, at least when I started investing, every single one I ever looked at would trade sideways and do nothing. However, this ETF is actually not too bad. It's over the past 2017 to 2020, it rose from around $20 to 25, which is about a 25% gain over a four year, three year period. And then of course, that happened, the virus, and now it's recovered back again. It's starting to stabilize near the top. And at this point, I think it's a kind of interesting buy. If it's going to continue to have this kind of growth, the market continues to stabilize, at least when it comes to this virus, then it could be a fantastic turnaround option. They do pay monthly, so keep that in mind. Most REITs and REIT ETFs will. And they do raise their dividend as well every once in a while. Keep in mind they have lowered it in the past too. Here's some of the top ETFs. I really like RealCan for some reason. Maybe just because every time I go to a strip mall, I always see their sign. But its biggest holding is Summit Industrial Income REIT, S-M-U-U-N-T-O. And this, com this company, this stock, has a 2.4% dividend, pays monthly. Really good average volume, so not too bad. Has pretty good earnings and revenue. It's growing, which is something that I really like to see. WIR is the second biggest holding of that of this REIT ETF. Um, obviously, not too much known for Yahoo Finance. However, one thing that I really do like is this. Look at that massive growth. That is fantastic. And then another one of the ETFs is another REIT, RIT, CI Canadian REIT ETF. This one's a four and a quarter percent in dividend. This one's got an even higher expense ratio, like higher than even the covered calls, which is crazy. However, the average volume is also kind of low as well. However, you are getting that growth as well, going from 15 to about $20 before the virus and has recovered. And the chart looks kind of similar in my opinion. And again, pays every single month, just like the last ETF. And we can see that it's been paying that for quite a long time since 2016. So don't expect them to raise that dividend anytime soon. These are its top investments as well. Dream Industrial Tricon are both kind of interest as well, or interesting as well. So Dream Industrial is kind of interesting. 4% dividend, again, probably pay, or it does pay out monthly as well. 600,000 shares traded. It's a pretty solid stock. And then when you're really looking at the financials, it's actually grown kind of steadily as well. Tricon is another interesting one. A lower, e or a lower dividend as well. So even though it's still a high dividend ETF, they still do have lower dividend stocks in their portfolio. And then when you look at the financials, it's kind of interesting where high revenue, low earnings. However, at least they are positive earnings. That's a, that's kind of a bonus. So it is kind of interesting how they've had higher revenue when you're comparing it those two years together, even like 2019 together. It's kind of interesting. This one, however, does hold single family homes, 31,000 of them. So... This is probably why there's a housing shortage, to be honest with you. This is this is one of the stocks as to why everyone's houses are going up to stupid prices. And of course, just because I have a love affair with Canadian banks, ZWB is a fantastic option. I personally would not buy this one just because why waste my money on an MER when I can just invest in the banks myself. However, what you are getting here is a higher yield, uh, mainly because... Um, you're getting the covered calls against the Canadian banks. So you are getting a higher yield, so maybe the 0.72% won't uh, really affect you all that much, but it is something to keep an eye on. Uh, it's up to you. You can get 4 plus percent dividends from banks anyway, so what's an extra half a percent with a covered call? And you are basically trading sideways until recently, but this is what most Canadian banks were like anyway, so keep that in mind. So if you're looking for a higher dividend, WD, WB is a fantastic option, but personally, I would just cut the covered calls out of it and not even get that ETF and just buy the banks straight up. It's so much better. Anyways, these are my picks for ETFs. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.